monopolistic competition is a market structure in which many firms, each with a low degree of market power, produce similar but differentiated products. These products are not perfect substitutes for each other, although they may broadly perform the same function. Monopolistically competitive firms use product differentiation and advertising to stress the supposedly unique qualities of products that may otherwise seem indistinguishable because they perform the same services as competing products. This situation differs from other market structures such as perfect competition and pure monopolies. Unlike an oligopoly, but like perfect competition, in monopolistic competition, the barriers to entry are usually low or non-existent. There are so many firms that one firm's decision to raise or lower prices is unlikely to have an effect on other firms' pricing decisions. Consequently, firms independently decide how much they will produce and at what price they will sell their product, largely based on production costs. Although this situation resembles a perfectly competitive market to the extent that entry barriers are low, there are many producers. It is different from perfect competition in which the market sets the price for a good. In a perfectly competitive market, the individual firm has no pricing power whatsoever. Therefore, firms in a perfectly competitive market face a horizontal demand curve, meaning the amount of demand stays the same no matter how much of a good is produced. In an imperfectly competitive market, each firm faces a downward sloping demand curve. The ability of firms to affect the market price of goods means that the more of a good produced, the lower the price the good will be. Firms seek to distinguish their product from its competitor's product by product differentiation, aimed at securing brand loyalty. The product itself can be differentiated by improving quality or performance, changing its shape and color, or adding extra features. Even when the product is almost indistinguishable from competing products, it can be differentiated by distinctive packaging. A manufacturer may develop a strong brand image based on the skill of its workforce, created by recruitment and training programs, and supported by quality control systems so consumers trust its products. All these forms of product differentiation are emphasized and communicated to consumers through advertising. To the extent a firm can convince consumers that its product is superior and distinct from potential substitutes, it creates a situation where it has the equivalent of a monopolistic power. In monopolistic competition, as distinct from other forms of imperfect competition, firms tend to be small. Examples include restaurants, personal services such as hair and nail shops, hotels, and small shops, most of which operate in monopolistically competitive markets. In the short run, profits tend to be higher than normal, but in the long run, it's difficult to maintain such profits because low entry barriers attract new firms who also benefit from product differentiation. The resulting competition brings prices down to sustainable levels. Monopolistic competition provides diversity to consumers, but it is inefficient because it makes it difficult to take advantage of economies of large-scale production. At a firm's optimal output, the price exceeds marginal cost, whereas in perfect competition, the price is reduced to marginal cost. In monopolistic competition, there are no or low barriers to entry, so it's easy for new firms to enter the industry. Firms in such a market produce close substitutes that are differentiated from each other in many ways. For example, if there's just one Chinese restaurant in a town center, it will probably offer dishes not available in nearby restaurants. If the restaurant raises its prices, it may not deter diners who like to eat Chinese cuisine regularly. Unless meals become so expensive, customers decide to switch to the nearby Thai restaurants. Because the Chinese restaurant has a local monopoly on Chinese cuisine, it can charge relatively high prices and make an economic profit that exceeds the normal profit that would be available if there were many competing Chinese restaurants on the same street. Unless establishing more Chinese restaurants in the area is restricted, the profitability of the existing restaurant is likely to attract competitors. These may differentiate their cuisine, for example, by offering different menus, while attempting to cater to the same customers as the original restaurant. As more restaurants open for business, the original restaurant's downward sloping demand curve shifts to the left as its customers switch to the alternatives. Competition will force the restaurant to lower prices to stay open. Eventually, prices fall to a point where economic profits are eliminated. 
A firm reaches long-run equilibrium at the point where the long-run marginal cost equals the marginal revenue at a point corresponding to the quantity of output at which the long-run average cost curve touches the demand curve. In the short run, which means the amount of time too short for a firm to significantly change the scale of operations, a firm operating in a condition of monopolistic competition has pricing power because it can differentiate its products from its competitors' products. In these conditions, a monopolistically competitive firm faces the same downward sloping demand curve that a monopoly or oligopoly faces. Therefore, the firm can reduce its output and raise prices without fear of being undercut by competitors, unless the price difference is so large that consumers are prepared to forego all of the perceived benefits of the product they usually buy. The increase in price allows the firm to reduce output, and thus operating cost, without losing profit. As with a monopoly, the firm will maximize its profit by producing up to the point where marginal revenue, the amount earned from the last unit of a good sold, equals the marginal cost, the amount it costs to produce the last unit of a good produced. If the average total cost at this point is below market price, the firm will make a profit. If it is above the market price, the firm will make a loss and eventually exit the industry, leaving those firms whose average total cost is below the market price with an increased overall market share. However, this position cannot be maintained indefinitely. In a monopolistically competitive market, entry barriers are low. So if existing firms are making a profit, competition will emerge from newcomers entering the industry. These newcomers will be able to differentiate their products to attract customers away from the products of existing firms. As a result, the demand curve for existing, profitable firms in the industry will shift to the left. The firm will reach a long-run equilibrium in a monopolistically competitive market when the long-run marginal cost curve crosses the marginal revenue curve where the long-run average cost curve touches the demand curve for its product. At this combination of price and quantity of output, there will be no economic profit. All firms will make normal profits, as in perfect competition. Newcomers will no longer be attracted to gain entry, and the market will stabilize. The difference between monopolistic competition and perfect competition is that at the long-run equilibrium, the perfectly competitive firm will be producing at optimal efficiency, while the monopolistically competitive firm will be producing at less efficient points. In order to maximize profits and minimize costs, firms will reduce output and raise prices rather than utilizing all the resources at their disposal. Consequently, there will be excess capacity in this market. Excess capacity is a situation where the output level of production is less than what a firm could theoretically achieve. This underutilization of resources is evident in many monopolistically competitive markets. Examples include specialized retailers and restaurants, which are often not full of customers. Other examples include aircrafts not filled to capacity on flights, or hotels that are not fully booked.